The American Heritage Festival is an annual event which takes place in Lake City, South Carolina. This multi-era military event offers an abundance of information for its visitors. While I was unable to capture everything that we saw and learned during this festival, I was lucky enough to capture the lecture about General Patton. I hope you enjoyed this information as much as I did. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like it and as always, thanks for watching. <laughs> so, but I'm Dane Kaufman. I live outside of Columbia. We, we are pleased to be here. Our mission is to keep the memory alive. But this is going to be Pershing on Patton. Second Lieutenant Patton was a class of 1909. When he graduated from West Point, he went to the 15th uh, Cavalry, which was at uh, Fort Sheridan, Illinois. Sometime in 1915, he was transferred to the 8th Cavalry in San Antonio, which was under my command uh, at the time at Fort Bliss. When Pancho Villa raided Columbus, New Mexico on March 9, 1916, he killed eight Americans and wounded 15 others. President Wilson was not happy. He wanted Villa captured and orders were sent to General Funston who was the commander of the Southern District, to send me with 4,000 regular U.S. troops into Mexico. As I was having orders uh, prepared, Lieutenant Patton came to my office and asking to go along. He, I told him at the time I don't have an opening for an, uh, for an officer, uh, but he was very I persistent. I really want to say, I don't know where Paul is, but damn, Paul has really done this. He and his wife, sons. What an amazing thing we have. I hope you all just, let's give Paul a hand wherever he may be. But I want to talk to you a little bit about my grandfather, General Patton. The first thing I got to do is prove my identity. So I'm in this picture. I'm always wondering, can anybody tell which one is the good looking little boy? If you notice to his left is a great big German Shepherd. I met him too. Let me just talk about when I met my grandfather for the first time. Um, 1945, August, and <clears throat> I was almost five years old. My mother told me to go outside in a little pedal car and wait for this guy to get out of the car and come see me. And he said, that's my grandfather. Well, he'd never seen me and I'd never seen him. And so out of the car comes the two big boots, Ike jacket, cigar, big ass man. <laughs> I mean, this guy... When you're about that big, he was only six, one or two, but he was big and he had this helmet shining on me and uh, shining out and he looked down at me and addressed me. Well, I first, he got out and I saluted him. My guess is I saluted him with the left hand <laughs> because he immediately addressed me as, who are you, you little beep. <laughs> this was my first introduction and the next thing I was introduced to was this damn dog. <laughs> who was, this dog had been in Germany for five years with my grandfather. He probably ate more, I know there's some German actors here, but he probably ate more Germans than he did dog food. But this dog I did not think was going to like me. And as you can see, he's holding on to it more firmly than he is to my butt, you know, sitting up there. 1909, my grandfather, as uh, the general pointed out, when he was at West Point, um, when they graduated, they accepted the commission, 400, and then they went on with their lives. General Patton took 400,000 men with him in 1942 to march ashore in North Africa. And all these people were committed to beating the Third Reich. It's, it's an amazing what we accomplished, but not General Patton, but all those men, not only in Europe, but in the Far East, Japan, God, what a, my dad was a prisoner of war, and I know what the story was. I mean, I've heard about it. And it was amazing that uh, what these men suffered. Find out this, that it touches me, that I learned growing up, don't forget for every soldier over there, there was a mother back home. What an amazing thing the country gave. I got a lot of stuff on Patton, but I don't want to waste your time. I want to tell you what it was like to see him. After we established I had another name, and that name was Georgie. I corrected him. That was a mistake. But uh, I had been named 
George Patton is what I was named, George Patton Waters. My mother was the firstborn of uh, Mrs. Patton, my grandmother, and I was the secondborn child, so I didn't get my dad's name, John K. Waters. My grandfather, while he was there with us, he decided he would do what grandfathers do and, you know, play with his grandson. Well, he had some wonderful games we played. One of the games was you put your hands out like a little tugboat, and he smoked this big cigar, and he would come around and he put the ashes in your hand. That was, that's when I wanted to decide to go in the Navy because I wanted to be a tugboat. <laughs> I went first because you get the white ash, and the second is the red ash. So the moral of that is you always want to go first. I went in the Navy. I went first. Go first. Go first. I'm going to contradict that in a minute, but. Uh, it was a wonderful game, but we only played 15 days. My brother still has a big scar on his hand, which he picks to make sure we all never. You know. <laughs> we were all went out on the porch, and we were sitting out there in Washington, D.C. My grandfather goes to sit down. He's got a tray of um, well, the, you know, cookies, what I call them, but they were pâtés. And as he goes to sit in this canvas chair, his buttocks goes into the chair. And it doesn't stop. Okay. It keeps on going down. The chair explodes. The cups go up. I heard a language I'd never heard. It was a second language that, I mean, he spoke fluently. I told my mother, I said, oh, this is, I'm going to use this when I ever get to kindergarten. I'm going to use this. And I was told that this is the language that you use to motivate people. Well, I went in the Navy. I learned it. It helped. One morning, I went out on the, the porch with him, and he was having his morning coffee, which is a brandy. And I was standing next to him, and there was a little cat down by the by a pond. I, how far the pond was away? How do you know when you're four and a half years old? Hell, I could just see over the, the little railing. And all of a sudden, these two cannons go off right next to my ears. Nine or 12 shots. And there's two cats down there that are raising their arms and stretching and, you know, just going out for a morning walk or whatever, morning kill. <laughs> and there's nothing but fur and fuzz down there. <laughs> I always was told my mom, said, oh, you know, they're fine. They'll be back tonight. I don't know which part of them will be back. <laughs> Another thing that, that had, it was a great experience I had with him was that uh, I was terrified of lightning. The night that they had think about the night after he'd arrived but this lightning storm was going off and all I could see is this lightning coming down and uh, I remember my name's Georgie at that point so I think well so I went uh, with this dog and we went underneath his couch just to hide and I see my brother walking along in his little Buster Brown shoes and right behind him are these two boots coming where the hell's that blank blank Georgie? At least he had the right last to Georgie. <laughs> well, I lied to you about going first. Because when this hand came underneath the bed for the extraction, I realized this is not right. Let the dog go first. <laughs> and the dog bit his hand terribly. There were no paper towels. Only thing it returned was a bloody hand. And I was extracted from down there held up as an example with probably one arm and you know no so and so and so and so grandson of mine is going to be a coward and your name's not georgie anymore so my brother says well he changed it to patsy but i've shortened it up it's p-a-t just patsy. <laughs> he was just a person that had some good people so many good people that worked for him and I say worked for him. They all worked with him. He would say in his diaries, I didn't earn these medals. I'm wearing them for them. I work with the Medal of Honor Society. There's not one recipient that wears the cross or the blue that says, I, I earned it. No. They earned it. Their men earned it. They're wearing it for him. Oh, one other thing I forgot to tell you is um, when I met him the first time, I went back inside and his, uh, my brother said, what's he like? And I thought, well, you find out. I'm not going to tell you. And his name was John, and they ended up calling him Joogie. So I didn't get off so badly. John said, well, damn, you know, Pat, it's almost time for Christmas. And my brother said, well, what do you think? 
he's not bringing, he's not Santa Claus. This guy is not even have a beard. But he came in and he had a footlocker. And he opened the footlocker and gifts, there were gifts for the kids. So it had some guns. There was a P-38, a Mauser, uh, a couple of uniforms that were all crumpled up, recently worn, I think. And uh, he uh, had a hel two helmets. And one helmet had a hole right in the front of it where the, where the forehead. Well, Georgie, being the brave boy he was, picked the helmet up and had to try it on. Well, you can imagine if you shoot in, this would be, it cut my head pretty, pretty decently. I started crying. That was not acceptable. But after that was con contained, um, I guess this was the greatest thing he taught me. Because I held the helmet up and I looked at it and I thought, you've been over there killing these people and bringing all this home. And he looked at me and he said, that's a helmet of a hero. And it was, it was a German hero, a man who had fought for his country, who believed in what his country believed in, and had died for it. I, I don't know if you've ever questioned how he was killed, but it was an automobile accident. It wasn't anything planned. Leaning forward through the little security window, the car hit another car, snapped his neck, took all the head, skin off of his head, and he broke his you know, broke a neck, got out of the car. The report says, um, don't blame my men thing of, he just, he died. He had pneumonia finally at the end, uh, just didn't, he didn't make it. I just want to tell you one thing about these boots. Um, they're eight pounds each for one thing. Try to carry them on an airliner. <laughs> but these are the boots that he, that he had on as he changed my name and addressed us and got out of the car and everything. And these are the boots that were on in the automobile accident. And it, what's interesting about these, um, there's a St. Christopher's on the heel. And I invite you all to come up and pick them up, hold them. The dirt appears from Mannheim on the bottom. That's the real thing.